Don't call it a side hustle. Reselling all those vintage items is now a billion dollar industry. It's also blowing up right here in the Kansas City Metro. Fox Force Pat McGonigal takes us on a whirlwind tour to see how people are turning trash into treasure. You'll easily get double the value. I will get double the value, and that makes it worth my time to, like, drive and stuff. Elizabeth Daniel doesn't go thrifting like the rest of us. Oh, my gosh. It's a Last Supper paint by numbers. Heck, yes. That goes in. In fact, you could say she has thrifting down to an art form. Uh, this sort of thing came, I don't know, became popular with this, like, weathered wood and... I don't really know why but this will sell it will. Yeah, a few years ago, I started a Facebook group. I named it Elizabeth Daniel decor. Each week I come up with a completely different theme and I style a picture or maybe you could call it a vignette. Elizabeth Daniel decor has nearly 16,000 members on Facebook. So each week Elizabeth uses her background in art history to scour for pieces of the puzzle or theme for that week's picture. This is a full time job. This is your job. Mm -hmm. I do this every day of the week. Ooh. Elizabeth has a savvy sense for the knickknacks that will sell. I consider it artwork. I'm like staging, like almost like you would stage a play or something. I stage the photo and then at 4 p.m. I break it down and sell everything in the photo individually and people get really into it. It's really fun. She almost instantly knows what will sell and what won't. I'm tempted to buy this. He's missing a horn. Elizabeth is on the leading edge of more than just a side hustle or a fad, experts say professional thrifting is here to stay. I don't really try to make like a huge profit on any one thing. I just try to grab as many things as I can while I'm here and make enough profit to make it worth it so that I can keep doing it. Wow. Yeah. And it's not just a business for Elizabeth. She says part of her goal is to keep as many things as possible out of the landfills. Um, I've been doing this, I think, three and a half four years now. Over at Slater Street Antiques in Merriam, several thrifters under 30 are making a living selling nostalgia. If you see something that you like yourself and your heart calls to it, then buy it if you can buy it for cheap and then resell it because you don't know if what you like someone else may like too. The old expression's true. What might be trash to some is a treasured timepiece to someone else. An original job of the hut from Star Wars. You could go back to your childhood for just 45 bucks. Anyway, these are all things that go together in a photo. Back at Elizabeth's home in Tonkinoxie. I mean, everything you see in here like will be for sale at some point. There's a seemingly endless amount of inventory to keep her business going, and Elizabeth isn't the only one riding this wave. A recent industry report projects the global secondhand market to nearly double, reaching $350 billion in annual revenue by 2027. It's a fascinating new industry. Catcher's mask? That's an old school one that even newcomers can learn to pick up. Okay. People like blue glass. People do like blue glass. You're good at this. You're hired. <laughs> that is Pat McGonigal <laughs> reporting. That is his new side gig now. Elizabeth Daniel has one final piece of advice. If you're thinking of doing this as a get rich quick scheme, you will be disappointed. Yeah, there's a lot of legwork that goes into this. It can be lucrative, but you really have to love it and be willing to stick it out for a long time and spend a lot of time in those thrift stores.